And welcome back. So it's, I guess you could say it's day 10 spoilers, but really, it's now the best of the rest, which I'm not certain I'll title it that, because um, Wedge uh, and the Monosaurus to uh, titles is uh, ones like that. I don't want to seem like I'm ripping anyone off. Which, by the way, Wedge, I'm a fan. If you ever saw this video, I'm subscribed. Love your stuff. Keep it up. Um, but no, so every Friday, the week before the pre-release, they spoil the full set. And we are here to talk about all the cards I did not get a chance to talk about. So, and well, just no, I'm not lying. Thank God. This is I'm actually on Wizards of the Coast. This is that's the upside of doing a the remaining cards. I can actually be on Wizards of the Coast actual site, and it will not make me lag. So I'm because of the way they've set it up, because of the double sided face cards, because they come first. I'm actually going to uh, start with the double sided face cards and the appropriate color that I'm talking about, and then work my way down. But, yeah, so this is, we're starting with the white ones. So, Town Gossip Monger. It's a 1-1 one, one human, 1 white. Tap an untapped creature you control by, and tapping, you tap it, and then tap an untapped creature you, you control to transform this creature into Incite Ramble. Uh, or, yeah, Incited ra a Rabble, which is, again, human Incited Rabble text each turn. If able, you pay two generic, Incited Rabble gains uh, plus 1, plus 0 oh until the end of turn. And, and then, of course, the player, you'll never believe what I, I, it's just this guy with this bushy red beard, so I'm just like, I'm imagining him saying, you'll never believe what I heard, rumors are sparks, gather enough of them and something's gonna catch fire. <laughs> so basically, he forms that unruly mob, more or less, um, which actually, I believe, is a legitimate uh, card. Uh, no, I don't, if it is, it's somewhere else. As for the card itself, you can get it out in turn one, and turn two, you can play another one drop, tap it, and then, yeah, you could transform it there. So by turn three, you'll have a two three that's attacking each turn, and you could pump it up for a three three. Solid one drop, absolutely. I'm I'm pretty keen on that. I mean, I'm, if I'm in a white and I get it, yeah, that's going to be filling up my curb pretty well. Uh, then we now we have a, a puff, man. The, the pronunciations of some of these words, because I, I I glanced over this earlier today. I haven't actually had a chance to really look at the cards. But um, I'm going to try to get this name right. Ap Apothecary Geist. Three generic, one white. Two, three, flying. When Apothecary Geist enters the battle, if you gain control, if you control another spirit, you gain three life. Uh... From what I understand, three draw, three, two threes flyers for four are generally okay to use. It's got enough sight if you're using spirits, but only if you're using spirits. It's a tribal card and not a not a great tribal card. It's okay, but you're not gonna first pick it or anything like that. So it's all right. Uh, bound by the silver, uh, by the moon silver. Two generic, one white. Enchantment aura. Enchant creature cannot attack or an uh, enchant creature. Enchant creature cannot attack, block. Or transform. That's an interesting one. Sacrifice another permit. Attached, bound by silver, uh, moon silver to a target creature. Excuse me. Activate this ability only any time you can cast a sorcery and only once each turn. So it is limited because you not only can only activate it as a sorcery, but only once a turn. But it act, it will stop anything that transforms. So if you somehow put it on a like um, so that is an actual card that if you're able to get it out, say on. Uh, if, oh, well, no, it's it still wouldn't counteract that freaking vampire wizard that turns into a Sidious Mist, because you can just transform it in response and block it with the hexproof. Uh, but it's it basically stops all your non-hexproof transformers, basically. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a powerful effect in this format. It's a generic, it's a pacify, it's an arrest, more or less, which aren't bad effects. They, they serve their place, and I like pacifies, and I like arrests, they're fine. But um, it, it really is just going to have its real... Um, now, that being said, this does actually stop... It didn't occur to me. This does stop the Origins Planeswalkers from transforming as well. So for those Origins Planeswalker, Planeswalkers that are still around, that are still in use, could work, but if you got to know that they're using them. Um, other than that, that was just like a standard... Uh, a, it's like a standard... It's like a more expensive pacify. It doesn't even stop the ability of a creature. So it's, it's a more expensive pacify if you're not going after a transformed creature. Well, there are Cathar's Companion, two generic, one white, three one hound, with a giant ass head. This, it looks like Scrappy Doo from the Scooby Doo movie. It looks 
like Scrappy Doo. But I did because I, I again I glanced over. I didn't see it, but it didn't click in my mind right now. It just just uh, it looks like Scrappy fucking Doo. <laughs> Oh, uh, so what is Scrappy? So fuck it, I'm calling it Scrappy Doo for the remainder of my time this card exists. So Scrappy Doo, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Scrappy Doo gains indestructible to the end of turn. Um, so it's like an indestructible prowess without the pump effect, which, to be fair, is not a bad ability. I wish I had better stats, um, because three one for three. If it were a three two, I could definitely see this maybe having more use. But Indestructible is not... You'll notice there's actually quite a bit of Indestructible giving... Uh, cards that give Indestructible or cards that have Indestructible in this set. But there's a lot of shit that exiles stuff too, so Indestructible actually doesn't mean as much as it used to. <laughs> Which I like. I like the fact they'll give more Indestructibility just passed around, but they're also going to say, yeah, don't don't count on that too strongly. So then we have Champlain's Blessing. Standard, one white, you gain five life. You know what? There's there was one in Mirrodin, Mir Scars of Mirrodin that was one generic and well, technically at that time it was one colors, but it was two, one white and one generic, anything, and you game five. And most people found that not good. But honestly, if you have no one drop creatures in your opening hand, you're in white, but you have this. No, this is actually not a bad card. At all. Now late game, not, actually even late game, it's a good little pick me up. Give five life for one mana. Yeah, actually, that's not bad, I don't think. That is one of those rare exceptions of a life gain card, because I hear a lot of people harp on life gain a lot. It's one of those rare exceptions of a life gain card that, uh, trust me, I think, in fact, I think if it was uh, cost any more uh, on life gain, it actually would be a little more unfair for the life gain. Actually, no, you could have pushed it maybe to two, six, and it wouldn't be, still wouldn't be bad, like, too powerful. If you pushed it to seven or above for one mana with no downside, then you're starting to push it. Then that card actually should be on a common at that point. It's like, you gain set, you gain ten life for one mana. That actually would probably be more close to a, either an uncommon or a rare or an uncommon that I don't print that much. Anyway, but honestly, for a life gain card, and I'm a fan of life gain kind to an extent. Unlike uh, I, I love mill effects; those are great. I love pump effects; those are cool. I love creatures that do that. But I also recognize. Uh, that not all the effect like the like the spirit we just talked about that gives you three life for a spirit. Yeah, it's an upside if you got a spirit, but that's not a good representation of a good life gain card. That's a good life gain card in my opinion. So moving on, Dauntless Cathar, two generic, one white, three two human soldier. You pay one generic, one white, exile Dauntless Cathar from your graveyard. Put a white white. Put a one one white spirit creature token with flying into the battlefield. Activate this ability only. Anytime you can cast a sorcery, so you get a three-two with a uh, you get a three-two for three, uh, and you can honestly it kind of encourages you to just keep attacking with it because eventually you'll be like, okay, now I get a spirit, now I get to do it again, and I got inva evasion. Uh, again, maybe wish its stats were a little better, but well, yeah, whatever. Uh, it's a solid card. I'm okay with it. De <laughs> Devil's Thorn Fox, one generic, one white, three one white fox. Except he looks all mangy. <laughs> um, nah, it, it's a it's a three one for two. It's it's passable. Th those effects work most of the time. Uh, Emissary of the Sleepless. Jimmy, <clears throat> four generic, one white, two four f spirit flying. Emissary of the Sleepless enters the battlefield when it does. If a creature died this turn, put a one one spirit creature token with flying into the battlefield. So, <clears throat> so. That's better. Um, and a set where a lot of things are probably going to be dying. This is a decent card. However, it's 3-5 space between two buys, which would normally be good. But for 5 mana, that's a bit much. I think I would have liked it better if you priced it 1 mana down but made it an uncommon. Then I could have seen this working. But I think it's just a little too heavily costed for that effect. Uh, I'm certain someone will use it. Oh, again... If I have to, and I'm in white, I'll use it. Uh, Ethereal Guidance. Two generic, one white. Sorceries. Target cre creatures you control get plus two, plus one until the end of turn. Combat trick. Actually, not even combat trick. It's a before combat trick. Combat trick. Uh, two, one. Um, I mean, if you've got like, a little army of uh, spirits that have formed in the last couple of turns, then yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, 
And honestly, it's not bad at all if you got a couple creatures on and you just want to swing in. So it's not terrible. It's not. Um, I don't see many. Pe- I don't see people running this over some other like instant pump spells. But um, who knows? Uh, Griff's boon. Now there are. I don't. I don't know if there are Griffs on the plane. We don't. I don't think there are. Is a Griff card? Hold on. I'm actually just gonna go down real quick and see if we got any Griff cards. Um. Not in white, we don't have any Griff cards. So I'm wondering... I'm trying to remember... Please remind me if there were Griffs on Innistrad in the last uh, th- in the last block. Moving on, though. Um, Griff's Boon. One white enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Creature gets plus one, plus oh, and flying. Return it to your graveyard if you pay three generic, one white. To the battlefield, attach to target creature. So there is literally no downside to this card at all. <laughs> it's a recursion pump... Enchantment. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah, that's gonna find. It's gonna find its home. That's got. It's a solid card. Fly. Pump up any. Just pump up any of the cards I've just talked about, and any cards I've talked about in the past. We, give it flying, and if that somehow does go to the graveyard, no, I'm just gonna bring that back, and you know, do it again. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, then we have Inquisis- Inquisitor's Ox. Uh, three generic, one white, two five ox. Delirium gets plus one plus oh, oh, yeah, plus one plus zero, and has vigilance as long as four or more card types among different cards in your graveyard. Uh, many fields now lie follow follow in Gavini as the oxen have become confiscated to perform other duties. Uh, I why does the ox have delirium? <laughs> the I mean. Don't get me wrong. They've been showing a lot of the art lately for the Delirium stuff. And, um... Yeah, it is hint... There is very big hints towards Emmercruel. And apparently the... No, apparently, um... Because there's a, like... They, they always do these puzzle things. The, one uh, Or just to figure out what's going to come next, more or less. In, like, um on Twitter and in the pre-releases and stuff like that, and one of them was Tamio's journal. And if I heard, saw it right, the uh, the numbers translated to the phrase, they came as three. And I've been, we've been, if you look at some of the art for some of these Lyrium guys, not all of them, mind you, like this ox doesn't look, as for the card itself, real quick, it's okay, it's not amazing, it's okay, it, it, you're, we're not probably going to pick it first, that's for certain. But, um, the, uh, they've been looking kind of tentacly, if you look at, if you, especially the black and red cards, they're looking kind of pentacly. <laughs> uh, but in, next up is Inspiring Captain for three generic, one white, three, three, human knight. Enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. A uh, good temporary pump. After that, though, he's just a, he's more or less just a hill giant. And it's fine. It's it's going to fill up your curve. Um, Melting Inquisitor, two generic, one white, two, three. Human cleric, militant inquisitioner gets plus zero plus one for each equipment you control. Um, I'm just gonna scan real quickly down real quickly to the artifacts to see what we have for equipments in this set. Uh, dude, one, two, three, four, five, is six. I know that we have the transform card. That's one. Uh, so seven equipment. So, um, which by the way, grotesque mutation kind of, uh, just go talking about the Emerald thing. That's a black card. You can see the purple in those tentacles. You can kind of see again, of the Aldrazi, uh, Emerald is the one that's not about destroying the landscape. It's about corruption. So you will see mutations in a way. And it's Eldritch, Eldritch Moon is the name of the next set, which is very Cthulhu-esque in its uh, origins. But as in terms of this guy, uh, I guess it all depends on what equipment you're putting onto it, honestly. Because um, if you can just put one, maybe two equipment, that means it gets a plus one, two, plus O, oh, plus whatever equipment bonus it gets, assuming you're equipping it. But there are far better cards to be playing than this. Uh, Moreland Drifter, one generic, one white. Delirium. Moreland Drifter has flying as long as there are four more cards in your graveyard of different types. That's kind of... I mean, it's a bear, and it's a bear that will get a plus later on in the game, but... Eh. It's alright. It, it, nothing amazing. Nothing mind-blowing, basically. Uh, Near Heath Ch- Chaplin. 
Uh, or Hearth. No, it's Heath. Three generic, one white. Three one. Un uh, uncommon. Lifelink. Uh, two, uh, two generic, one white. Exile it from your graveyard. Put two white, white flying spirit tokens into play. It can activate only anytime you can play a sorcery. So, this is a slightly better version of... Where are you? Dauntless Cothar. Now, while Dauntless Cothar has somewhat better stats and, turn, and mana cost and a lower paying count, this one, really, it's one mana more... So it's a four mana card, but you and you pay one extra for its effect in the long run. But it's a three one with lifelink. So when it does basically, because you're probably going to attack with it, so you can get the two uh, spirits, you're going to gain life out of it. You're going to get get a trade for that, and then assuming you got the life to, assuming no, if you're waiting next turn, you can be like, okay, and then I'm going to put two spirits on the field now that he's dead. So that's a lot. But I th honestly think that's a lot better than the other one. Uh, that one I'd probably use more than the other one, actually. Uh, not Forgotten. Visit the dead and they may return the favor. Uh, two, one generic, one white. Sorcery. Put target creature... No, wait, put target card from your graveyard on top of the, or bottom of the owner's library. It's a graveyard. Put a white, white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So, you get recursion or you can just... if. You know they have something bad in their graveyard that they don't want to use again, or they've got Delirium off right now. You can also screw their graveyard over, and you still get the spirit. So that's a cool little uh, effect. Uh, and here's, uh, again, the um, Paranoid Parish Blade. Now, I talked about this one, I believe, or um, in one of my last videos, but I didn't actually pay attention to the art tonight. You see a tentacle coming out of his armor, and it's very emigral <sighs> I'm, I'm on record saying I wasn't really a big, really interested in seeing Emrakul in this set, but the thing is, I don't think, I think they will play it off correctly, I think, because, again, she's not, Emrakul, and she's, she's classified as a she, she's not the angel of, or angel, she's not the Eldrazi of doing anything that's going to warp the land, she's not going to, so, while we might get an effect that's specific to her lineage i don't think we're going to uh see have just a completely different set uh, from like uh and shout kind of like how avison was ve uh, restore was very different from the first two sets i don't think we're gonna get that disparity but i'm still kind of hoping it's not emrakul but at this point it's looking like it is uh let's see open the armory a sorcery uncommon one generic one white search your library for an aura equipment card reveal it and put it to your hand it's a good search card. Just plenty of ores and enchantments in this deck, uh, and uh, artifacts in this deck. So, or blob deck, Sh uh, block set at the moment. Uh, Puncturing light, one generic, one white. Destroy target instant. Destroy target attack and creature or blocking creature with power less than three or with power three or less. If you refuse to see light, then you will feel it. Uh, we see basically a twisted uh, Brua, Bruna, and. Uh, it's it's interesting to know that we don't I don't believe there is a Bruno card there is kind of a gold light card but I'm not certain if it's still her or not uh, and uh, there is Cigar as well but she's the only one who actually don't I don't think got a card a legitimate card but yeah maybe they're saving it for the next set uh, so that's an actually a good po a good point I'd like to note on real quick despite the fact that the angels have gone corrupt. There aren't a lot of angels in this deck. I think I've got right now one, two, and two, three. Uh, Absent counts as four, five in the uh, uh, Angel of Deliverance. Apart from that, there really are not a lot of angels in this deck. Or I keep saying deck in this set, despite the angels going bad. Uh, so. I'm a little misled. Makes me feel sad. Uh, so, Silver Strike. Instant. Three generic, one white. Uncommon. Destroy target attack and creature. You gain three life. Good cut. Those, uh, those effects I like better than the power three or less, or mana recover and mana cost, whatever less. That Silver Strike, uh, that's a good. That's overall good combat check, and you get something out of it. Uh, it's a little expensive, but I think you'll be able to get it off. Spectral Shepherd, two generic, one white, two two, flying spirit, uncommon. Pay one blue and one generic, and turn it into a spirit you control to its owner's hand. So, yeah, you can um, <clears throat> use that as a kind of quirky combat trick if you can, if you think you can. 
Uh, now, it all depends on the spirits you have on the field, assuming you're running a spirit-based deck. Other than that, if you're not running in, if you're not really heavily running spirits, it's probably not going to be that amazing. It'll be okay to like kind of save it and then bring it back. Unfortunately, it's not like bounce and play something else. It's just bounce to your hand, and then you got to play it again. Now, granted, it's only two. No, no, it's three mana. If it were two mana, I could say, say oh no, then I'll just do it again. Oh, boop, 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 boop. But no, it's three mana, so. Eh. Uh, Stern Constable is next. Uh, one white. 1-1, one, one, discard a card, tap target creature. You can get madness off, you can do a whole bunch of... Uh, I'm sure you have a story. Everyone has a story. You can tell it to the bars. To the bars. Um, yeah. Strength of Arms, it, that's, it's an okay card. Mass Enabler, it, it's a one-drop. Uh, Strength of Arms, instant, one uh, white target creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. If you control an equipment, put a 1-1 one, one human soldier token into the battlefield. It's a solid pump spell on its own. If you just got that equipment on the field, there's a little extra bonus to it. So I like it. Uh, tenacity, three generic, one white. Creatures you control, instant creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain lifelink till the end turn. Untap those creatures. Good solid combat trip uh, trick. Uh, for four mana, yeah, I, th I think it's okay for four mana. I, I do. Um, in terms, uh, there is Unruly Mob, but it wasn't a transform card. Um, whenever a creature dies, you can, or you control dies, put a 1-1 counter on a really mob. Uh, one generic, one white. And then, yeah, that's the end of the blue, uh, the white cards. So, as, uh, looking over the white cards, there's a lot of cool stuff in the white cards, but if I, to, if I really were to, uh, say what I would be going towards right now, I'd say I, I lean more towards the blue, green, and red right now, just because the werewolves, and I like blue. So that's what, how it looks to me right now. But we'll see how it turns out when I talk about the other ones tomorrow. Uh, yeah, because each one's going to be its own separate video. Uh, I'm not uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to be ha have time to talk about the entire remaining set because that would be an hour-long video. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review of it at some point. I will be back tomorrow to talk about more of these because i don't have i won't have time today even if i get home because i got, gotta go see batman versus superman again and i'm going to see what mark and the spoiler review is coming for that so thanks for watching see you next time